Hey what's going on guys, this is Andrew Chicken and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be going over the worst talent for every Paladin's Champion. While not every talent in today's video is a total throw pick, all of these talents are the least helpful out of the Champion's three options. Before we get started, I want you to comment down below right now what you think the worst talent for your favorite champion is and why. And hey, while you're down there, go hit that big red sub button if you want to see more content like this from me. We're trying to hit 60,000 subscribers before the end of the year and I would really appreciate your support. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and get straight into the video. Video. Defiant Fist is a total throw pick ever since Andro's rework a few months back. His new revolver does way worse close quarters damage than the old one, which is counterproductive for his melee talent. The cards that work best with his talent also got gutted, since they now only give a small benefit per punch instead of a massive benefit on kill. Since you're only ever using Defiant Fist as a finisher move, this turned out to be a major nerf. Just stick to Curse Revolver because you'll find way more success. Slugshot is the weird alternative to Ash's main off-tank talent, Battering Ram. This talent removes all of Ash's area damage and cover denial to give her more range, which can be helpful on maps like Timbermill, but actually hurts Ash in most other cases. Maybe if this talent did more single target damage, you'd see it played more often. Unstable Fissure is a talent that can be helpful, since it gives you two forms of an aggressive rewind. However, the other talents simply provide more benefit. Deja Vu allows Atlas to rewind multiple targets from a greater distance and rewind them behind cover, and Temporal Divide can block damage across the entire map. When stacked up against the other options, Unstable Fissure looks useless in comparison. Eternal is a talent that hurts his on more than it helps. This talent makes it so that his ire will never decay unless you use an ability, but at the cost of the bonus damage you gain when above 80% ire. This might sound helpful since it means Azan has more uptime on his passive damage reduction, but let's face it, you only need that damage reduction when you're in combat, and if you're in combat, you're almost always at max IR by both landing hits and taking a few yourself. Considering how this talent guts your damage output, the extra uptime really isn't worth it. Barrick actually has a very healthy talent dynamic, since all three change his playstyle in a fun and drastic way. His worst talent is arguably Forge Fire, since it removes his ability to deploy a massive dome shield that can be extremely valuable in tight circumstances. However, it's it's still a very fun playstyle, so don't let that dissuade you from trying it out. Betty's worst talent is by far Controlled Fury. This talent concentrates the hail bombs onto a tighter space, allowing it to dump more damage into a single target. However, that's actually not great, because the whole benefit of hail bombs is its massive area denial. This talent makes it much easier to evade the hail bombs, actually reducing the damage this ability deals. Just stick to Fiery Disposition if you really want to send the enemies running. Accelerant is Bomb King's worst talent for a similar reason to Controlled Fury. Grumpy Bomb is very helpful as a zoning tool, since it forces enemies to use their defensive or mobility skills to not get stunned by the bomb. By shortening the fuse of the Grumpy Bomb, you may get a few cheeky stuns at first, but once the enemies buy resilience, this talent becomes next to useless. And since the fuse is shorter, you're actually getting less zoning effect out of it than you otherwise would, making this talent a no-go. Buck is another champion who has three strong playstyles, but the least effective is arguably Bulk Up. While his other two talents provide bonus damage that is much harder to counter, all it takes to counter Bulk Up is to wait until late game Cauterize. While the playstyle certainly still has its perks when combined with the right build, it's just not as helpful as the other two options. Caspian's talent everywhere at once is a good talent on paper. It drastically reduces the cooldown of his movement ability and grants him some bonus stacks for hitting enemies along the way. While the talent might be good, the movement ability certainly isn't. Caspian's movement ability is a short dash that doesn't carry momentum, which is much less flexible than many other flanks' movement options. And if the stacks are what you need, measured cadence with casual competency is a far better option. Big game is Cassie's tank-busting talent, and while it's certainly good for that, it's not good for much else. Exaction and Impulse are both much better options Options for dealing with a wider range of threats, and Exaction can actually perform better against some tanks because it provides her with a better long-term damage and sustain. Stunning Visage is Corvus's damage playstyle, and while it can certainly be a powerful option in the right circumstance, it's also a very risky option to use. By using his only movement ability to stun and damage the enemies, he can potentially teleport into a worse position or be left without a movement option to escape. His movement ability can also be buggy sometimes, which is just the icing on this nasty mud pie. All of Dredge's talents have their own flaws, but arguably the worst one to run is Hurl. Hurl is a crutch talent that provides players with an easier time hitting mobile targets, but it comes at a cost. Dredge's Harpoon doesn't actually apply Cauterize, which makes it scale horribly into late game. It also does less damage than Dredge's base grenades, and it loses the powerful slow that can make Broadside and Kraken a lot more effective. 
Drogos is another champion with three really good talents, and it's hard to make a case that any of them are bad. You could make the argument that Combustible is his worst, since it makes the fair and balanced combo harder to land. However, this argument is pretty flimsy, because Combustible is still really good in some circumstances. All of Eevee's talents have a cult following behind them, but the least popular of the three is Over the Moon. This is because Over the Moon provides the least value out of the three, and thus is the most difficult experience. While the increased damage after Soar can certainly be good, there are a lot of situations where it doesn't really cut down on Eevee's time to kill. In a meta where Haven and Veteran are extraordinarily commonplace, Eevee ends up having to 3-shot a lot of champions anyways, making this an extremely niche talent. Honestly, if you're trying to run anything other than Aegis, you're doing it wrong. While Formidable and Scorch certainly have their benefits, they pale in comparison to the utility Aegis provides. Being able to toggle the shield whenever you want, instead of having to deal with a 12 second cooldown, is an opportunity just too good to pass up. Solar Blessing is Furia's weird hybrid talent that's not really great for healing or damage. It has the highest healing per second in the game, but is extremely inflexible since it forces teammates to practically stand still for it to work. And if you're using it to attack, just play Exterminate instead. It simply does does more damage. Grok is another champion who has three really fun talents that all serve their purpose. Maelstrom is a powerful damage talent, Totemic Ward enables some incredible hybrid playstyles in specific comps, and Spirit's Domain is generally his most reliable solo healing talent. Arguably his worst is Spirit's Domain, since it neuters his damage output. But that doesn't make it a bad playstyle, because it's still a fundamental talent that is crucial for solo healing. Grover's worst talent, shockingly, is Deep Roots. This talent used to be his best by a mile, but since its rework, it's fallen staggeringly behind. The talent doesn't really work properly, since it only provides the healing pool on the subsequent targets it chains to. It's extremely tough to use, and doesn't provide nearly the same benefit as Rampant Blooming or Ferocity. Pyromania destroys Imani's single target damage on her fireballs for a small area of effect. Because the time to charge up an 800 damage fireball is so long, it's not worth it to run this talent in lieu of any proper blaster. Tremors is the clear choice for Inara's worst talent because it can really screw up her team. This talent removes the ability for her to manually destroy the walls, which results in her fatally trapping her team or ruining powerful ultimates completely by accident. It's still a fun playstyle and it can be helpful for providing a ton of cover on point, but it's not a serious competitive option. Sacrifice is a tricky talent to justify using. It doesn't provide any benefit to help Io support her team, other than keeping herself alive when she otherwise would have died. While this can be helpful, this often means putting Luna off in a corner somewhere safe, where she's not helping Io defend herself or dish out damage and stuns. It also doesn't really work as a damage talent for the same reason, since it often results in Io going up by herself to shoot enemies down. It doesn't increase her damage output at all, making it by far the worst quote unquote damage talent in the support class. Or at least, the worst damage talent except Binary Star. This talent literally does nothing. Its DPS is almost the same as Genos' base Star Splitter, and it also has the exact same ammo economy as its Rapid Fire cousin. The only thing you gain with Binary Star is a less reliable weapon to use, and you lose out on the benefits of his other two talents. Don't fall for this trap, stick to Luminary and Power Cosmium. Unfinished Business is another talent like Caspian's which is good on paper, but held back by a terrible movement ability. This talent extends the duration of Body and Soul, and provides a huge burst heal at the end of it relative to the damage you took during the ability. However, Kasumi's Body and Soul is not able to be cancelled early while you are teleporting to her soul, so the extra duration on this talent actually makes it so you're more likely to die by standing in the same place for longer. A simple fix would be to add a new function to the movement ability, where if you left click, you teleport to your soul, but if you press the ability button again, you teleport back to the body like it already does. Khan's worst talent is Leon's shield. This talent boosts the regeneration of his bulwark, but that benefit gets completely nixed by a little bit of wrecker. Instead, you should be using Storm of Bullets for some monstrous damage output, and don't shield bot on the point like most Leon's shield players do. Kinesa has a genuinely awful talent called Oppression. This talent is completely unhealthy for the game, because it basically just turns her into a mind throwing simulator with a proper build. On release, you had players running around spamming the mind button and getting top damage in the lobby through the power of auto-aim. Now, it's just a bad talent that's not fun to play and is wildly ineffective. Blood Reaper buffs up Koga's ultimate while providing him no way to be helpful without it. Koga's base kit is pretty bad without the help of Adrenaline Junkie to boost his energy economy, and Blood Reaper leaves him with no way to really be effective outside of his ultimate. However, his ultimate isn't even that great with this talent either, because most champions have movement abilities or defensive abilities to escape or block its damage. Maybe if this talent gave the ult to Cripple, it would finally be a little bit better than a total throw pick. Heroism is a talent that provides Lex with an amazing survivability tool, since it packs damage reduction, crowd control immunity, and a short range dash all into one ability. It would be great if Lex didn't rely on Discovery or Death Hastens in order to actually get kills. 
Precision is a talent that I love conceptually, since it rewards you for hitting consecutive shots. However, it's really only great against tanks, and when compared to the quick burst that you can get with Eminence or the massive AoE damage Alacrity provides, this talent looks much less appealing in comparison. Honestly, all three of Lilith's talents suck. Curse of Accord neuters your damage, Maelstrom of Carnage destroys Lilith's swarms by removing the range deploy, and Murderous Intent literally doesn't do anything except make her shots harder to hit. Just play Curse of Accord if you're the main support on your team, and cry if you're not. Maeve is a really difficult champion to find the worst talent for, because all three have some use. Cat Burglar significantly boosts Maeve's damage output, Rogue's Gambit gives her some of the best mobility in the game, and Street Justice is the bane of all tank players. I would say Street Justice is her worst, since Maeve's main goal is to fight squishy champions, and her other two talents enable her to do that better. Makoa's worst talent is arguably Leviathan, since most of its usefulness is only realized after you ult. However, the extra 500 health is still very helpful, and being able to use Hook and Shell Spin twice in a row is extremely powerful. Ripened Gourd sucks. Please don't use it. Yes, it can give the tank some juicy healing numbers, especially in early game. However, this talent sucks in comparison to Spirit's Chosen, because Spirit's Chosen is much more flexible and also scales better in late game due to its burst. Ripened Gourd also removes the damage of the Gourd, which cripples the utility of the ability. The Gourd's damage is subtle but impactful, and removing it is something you don't want to do. Moji's worst talent is arguably Snack Attack because it only provides a benefit after you get a kill. Toot provides more consistent healing especially during a fight, and Boom Boom can be good on tight maps. Display of Force is Octavia's worst talent not because the damage or the root is bad, but because the ultimate is so easy to dodge. It's a telegraphed attack that most players are able to dodge with ease, making this talent only helpful in some niche circumstances. Pip's worst talent is still Mega Potion, even after the rework. As a main support, the talent is still too unreliable to be the better option over Combat Medic. As an off support, the talent is much better, but the increased damage from Catalyst is still favorable over the increased sustain of this talent. All three of Rama's talents can be great in the right circumstance, but an argument could be made that Earth Splitter is his worst. Rama already has one of the faster charging ultimates in the tank class, and his other two talents simply provide more value to Rom and his team. Ray's worst talent is Restraint. This talent used to be way better when Cauterize wasn't a passive, since Ray could drop a dead zone effect on an enemy without buying caught. However, now that everyone gets Cauterize 3 by mid to late game, this talent has become much more irrelevant. Flux Generator is by far Ruckus's worst talent. All it takes to make this talent useless is a small bit of Wrecker. Heads or Tails is Sati's most unhealthy playstyle. Not only is it inferior to her other playstyles in terms of its actual effectiveness, but it also encourages Sati players to spam auto-aim coins like there's no tomorrow, which isn't fun for anybody. Ceres' worst talent is Agony. This was actually an interesting talent rework that makes Ceres one of the only supports who can actively fight against the effect of Cauterize, but it requires too much work to get about the same amount of healing as you'd get anyways with Mortal Reach. Shaolin's worst talent is tough to say. Sand Trap provides some monstrous burst, Desert Silence provides a deadly 2 second silence, and Recurve is just a raw DPS increase. I'd say Desert Silence is his worst because it's the easiest to counter. All you need is Resilience 3. Sky is just bad. The only decent talent she has is Debilitate, which is a raw DPS increase to her poison bolts. The other two are total hot garbage, which is sad because Healer Sky used to be a somewhat fun and interesting playstyle. Strix's worst talent is unauthorized use. This talent used to be his go-to option for close ranged combat, but the new Crackshot rework has made this talent somewhat irrelevant. Crackshot lets Strix keep the reveal on his flare while having a pinpoint accurate burst of 900 damage every 1.2 seconds that is much better to use than his wildly inaccurate pistol. Unauthorized use is still better for long ranged combat than Crackshot because Crackshot is an ultimate DPS nerf, but you're still usually just better off going Nocturnal instead for the benefits it provides to your stealth. Inner Strength is Talus's best talent, and his other two are in a struggle to see which one can be forgotten by more people. I'd argue that Faustian Bargain is worse than nothing personal, because in a coordinated team, the reveal on low HP targets can actually be insanely helpful for the same reason why Sombra's passive is so good in Overwatch 2. Talus can really help out by calling out where low HP targets are to his team, but this only works if you're in a party with comms. Crush provides the fewest benefits to Terminus overall. Undying makes him much harder to kill, and Decimation allows Terminus to dish out some shocking burst. A stun on Shatterfall certainly isn't bad, but it's the least helpful out of the bunch. Tiberius only has two talents, Vicious Assault and Tigran's Fury. I think he's supposed to have three, but the devs just couldn't think of anything interesting or impactful to add. 
Oh well. Torvald's worst talent is arguably Field Study. The damage bonus it provides is powerful, but it only lasts for the duration of the shield. All it takes is a little bit of record to make this talent moot. The same goes for Thanks Grandpa, but at least the shield is a little bit more resilient with that talent. Tyra has three talents which can all be good depending on the situation. However, the worst one is definitely Burn Monster. It's so easy to run out of Tyra's fire ever since the cripple on this talent got removed, and even when the cripple was a thing, all you had to do was buy Nimble and walk away. Just use your brain cells when playing against this talent, and it's not a big deal. Unairing isn't even a good description for this talent, because it still airs. Mobile targets can still dodge the homing bombs, making this talent basically useless. Overcharged has been bad ever since release, and that includes its recent rework. The ability to grapple enemies out of position is an ability so powerful that it had to be removed from his base kit, and this ability got added back on this talent. However, you sacrifice so much in order to get the displacement back that it's ultimately just not worth it. Cardio is Victor's worst talent because the healing falls off hard in late game. It's still helpful if your healer sucks or you want to be more independent from the team, but burst mode and shrapnel are both more helpful if you want to deal more damage. Suspect everyone is Vivian's worst talent because it's very counterproductive. It lowers the cooldown of the shield by half, but only if it's destroyed. However, it increases the health of the shield, making it harder to destroy. Also, if your shield is taking so much damage that it's getting destroyed, you're probably going to die anyways. Plus, Wrecker already makes the shield useless, even without this talent. Surprisingly, Deafening Silence is Vora's worst talent. An on-demand silence without even needing darkness stacks sounds powerful, but resilience makes this talent moot. Plus, the recovery time of the Obliterate makes it difficult to really capitalize on the silence itself, since by the time you're able to start shooting again, it's already almost over. Her other two talents are simply more effective options that don't get countered so easily. Scorn is easily Willow's worst talent because it's so easy to dodge. Most players won't just stand inside your seedling, and if they are standing in it consistently, you could still beat them just as easily by picking any other talent. Unnatural Persistence is just stupid. Not only does it get countered hard by Cauterize, but it encourages Yagaroth players to pretend that they're a point tank. This talent just needs a rework because it's so incredibly bad and unhealthy for Yagaroth to have. Ying's worst talent is Resonance. It provides constant AoE damage, but it's harder to confirm kills with it than Focusing Lens, and ultimately, confirming kills is what really matters. Zin is a champion who relies more on good use of his base kit than actually picking a strong talent. Yomi is generally his most reliable talent since it's a flat DPS increase, and Guillotine can be helpful for making his ultimate actually able to kill things. That leaves Smolder as his worst, not because it's horrible, but because it provides the least benefit. And with the final champion out of the way, that's going to be the end of this video. Let me know in the comments if you learned something from this video, and also leave a like and subscribe for more content like this from me. You should also check out my Twitch channel and Discord server, both of which are linked in the description down below. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching, I will see you all next time. Peace out.